Hey everyone, it's Johnny, and welcome to your lesson on common root words. I hope you enjoy it. So, roots are the basis for our entire word study so far. They're really the majority of what makes up words, and they're a major word part because of that. As a reminder, a root is a basic word with no prefix or suffix added to it, so there's nothing at the beginning or the end. Affixes those are the prefixes and suffixes, are added to root words in order to alter their meaning. Now, in the T's exam, there are no specific root question types, but there are questions on word structure that assess your ability to analyze the word structure of words with two roots, words with a prefix and a root, words with a root and a suffix, or any combination of these. So let's take a look at a sample question and get a better idea. In this first question, we're looking at knowledge of two different word parts. And we'll break that down in a second. Here's a question. Based on an analysis of word structure, an arachnophobe is A, a person who loves spiders, B, a person who fears spiders, C, a person who fears snakes, or D, a person who loves snakes. First of all, I'm just talking out of my own preference here. I would definitely be in that B, C category, somebody's kind of a little afraid of both these things. But we'll move on to, uh, to talking about this question. So for this question type, they are asking for the meaning of arachnophobe, a word using two roots, arachno and phobe. Phobe in this case is almost acting as a suffix here. There are two different ways to approach this question. First is to study and memorize your root word meanings. And two is to create context. Ask yourself, where have I seen these words or parts of these words before? You may hear somebody saying, I have a phobia of, of something. Or if you're an 80s kid, you might have seen the movie Arachnophobia. But let's break down our question and answers. A is a person who loves spiders. A person who loves spiders is an arachnophile. There we're using that first part of that word, arachno, but adding that suffix, in this case it's a root word, file to the end. Arachno meaning spires and file meaning love or fascination of. B, a person who fears spiders. A person who fears spiders is an arachnophobe. Arachno meaning spiders and phobe meaning a fear of. That's our correct answer. You got it, good work. C is a person who fears snakes. Now here, we guess that a person who fears is also gonna be a phobe, but now we're just trying to figure out what is the root word for snakes? And that is an aphidiophobe. Aphidio means snakes. And finally, a person who loves snakes. I'm sure you can guess exactly what this word is going to be. You got it right. It's an aphidiophile. There, we're using the ending of our option for option A, and now we're just adding aphidio in the, in the beginning. So instead of an arachnophile as somebody who loves spiders, it's an aphidiophile of somebody who has a love or fascination of snakes. Let's go through one more question together, shall we? And in our next sample question, we're looking for knowledge of only one word part. Let's go into what that means in a second. Here's our question. Based on an analysis of word structure, herbicide is A, a chemical used to kill plants, B, related to plants, C, the study of plants, or D, herbal medicine. So for this question, that we're looking for the meaning of herbicide, a word using a root word, herb, and the suffix side, or in this case, aside. However, the question, as you can see, does not differentiate the word parts for you. You have to come to that conclusion on your own, knowing these terms. Now, there are a couple different ways to approach a, a question like this. The first is just as it's been before, to study and memorize the root word and suffix meanings. If you understand them and understand how they work together, this question will be very, very simple for you. Choose it and move on. Next is an analysis of the answer options. What is being assessed here? And this is very, very important to take a look at. If you see answer option A, B, C, and D, they all have to do with either herbs or things that are herbal, as in option D, herbal medicine, or plants, A, B, and C, chemical use to kill plants, related to plants, and the study of plants in this case. If you notice, those all have to do with herbs. Herbs themselves are plants. So we know we're really just, we can simply just single out that suffix of side there. Finally, we could create context. You can ask yourself, where have I seen these words or parts of these words before? That may give you a helpful clue to help with this question. With all those in mind, let's take a look at our answer options. Option A is a chemical used to kill plants. A chemical used to kill plants is an herbicide. 
Side is a suffix meaning to kill or harm. Something that kills or harms plants is an herbicide. If you got that one right, great work. Related to plants, that means herbal. AL is a suffix meaning related to or including. So something that's related to plants is herbal. C, the study of plants, that is herbalism. Ism is a suffix meaning to study. And finally, D, herbal medicine. It's kind of used as an, as, as an antithesis here. It's the difference between a chemical used to kill plants and then it harms plants and harms people versus something that's meant to help plants help people. But it has no root plus suffix word in the English language. We simply just call it herbal medicine. So with all this in mind, how exactly do we study and prepare for root and word part knowledge questions for our T's exam? The first option is just like our other word part questions. It's to study and memorize all the different word parts and their meanings. This is going to be most helpful in questions without context clues, which I'm going to be honest with you, are the vast majority of the questions on the T's exam. Very rarely are you going to see a word knowledge question with that sentence included. Now, word knowledge questions and root questions also test your cumulative knowledge. Cumulative is adding everything together. It's a test and assessment of all your prior skills, your knowledge of the affixes, prefixes, and suffixes, and your root words all mixed together. But don't worry about any of it. We've created a helpful list and flashcards as an attachment to this lesson to give you a helping hand. Option number two is plugging any unfamiliar word parts or words into words that you may already be familiar with. This strategy goes across word parts in these word part type questions. You can use your affix and your root word knowledge for process of elimination and answer selection. We'll go over some of that in our next questions. Option number three is using sentence and word context clues within the question when it's applicable. By using a combination of these three strategies, we're able to tackle word knowledge questions. So let's take a look at some examples to go and dive in a little deeper. In our first sample question, we have the following. Based on an analysis of word structure, fertile means A, a chemical or natural substance added to soil or land to increase its fertility, B, the quality of being fertile, productiveness, C, producing or capable of producing new life, or D, unable or incapable of producing new life. So for this question, we're looking for the definition of that word fertile. Before beginning, let's take a look at our answer options to decide if we're asked to find only one word part or multiple word parts. If you see A and B in our options, are both in include that word fertile or fertility. That connects with our root word, so that's definitely one of our options. But C and D talk about new life. When we fertilize something, we're creating new life. So if I go and fertilize my lawn, it may be creating new life. So in reality, this one is a tricky question as they're only looking at one word part there. They all include that root word, fert, F-E-R-T, and in this case, we're only looking at the suffix there. So with this one word part question type, we have two strategies to really give us a helping hand. The first is obviously to study and memorize your word parts. But the second is to plug the suffix or the multiple root words into words that we already know. So if we're using that root word, fert, F-E-R-T, that could be fertilizer, fertileness, or any other word that uses that same beginning. If we look at that suffix, I-L-E, I -L -E, that could be words like mobile, juvenile, etc. Those may give us a helping hand in understanding exactly how this question works. Nonetheless, let's move on to our answer options. A chemical or natural substance added to soil or land to increase its fertility is fertilizer. Same root word, different suffix. B, the quality of being fertile, productiveness. The quality of being fertile or productiveness is the definition for the word fertility. So I-T-Y in that option. C, producing or capable of producing new life. That is the definition for fertile. That is our correct answer. If you got that one, great work. Finally, D, unable or incapable of producing new life. That works as our antithesis option. And that is a definition of the word infertile. By placing in in front of the target word, it provides the antonym 
or the antithesis or opposite of our target word. So let's take a look at one more. Based on an analysis of word structure, flexible means A, an action that is performed as a response to a stimulus and without conscious thought, B, unwilling to change, C, a muscle whose contraction bends a limb or other parts of the body, or D, able to bend easily without breaking. So for this question, we're looking at the definition for flexible, flex and able or able, depending on your word choice. Before beginning, let's take a look at our answer options to decide if we're looking for only one or multiple word parts. Take a look now. Our options are again, are an action that's performed as a response without conscious thought, unwilling to change, a muscle whose contraction bends a limb or other parts of the body, able to bend easily without breaking. Now, if we think of flexing, and flexing is our root word there, we're able to see that an action that's performed without thought, that is that, that is a flex. Unwilling to change, that's the opposite of flexing. If you're not flexing, you're staying rigid. See a muscle whose contraction bends a limb. I think of my elbow or my knee. That's definitely flexing my elbow or my knee. And D, able to bend easily without breaking. I again think of those same two joints that I'm staring at while sitting at my desk. And those are both flexing as well. So all of these have to do with flexing, even though a and B are a little tricky in that way, and you might not be able to catch that offhand. But again, this is a one word part question. All these have to do with flexing. So we're only looking at that suffix, able or able. And we have two strategies again to help us. The first is to memorize and study all of our word parts. If you're able to put flex and able or able together, you're gonna to find this question very, very simple and you'll move on. The second is plugging our word parts into words that we already know. Things like flexors, reflexes, or inflexible. Or looking at able and able, words like responsible, eligible, or tangible. With these things in mind, let's take a look at our answer options. Option A, that is the definition of a reflex. B, unwilling to change, that is to be inflexible. Someone who's inflexible is set in their ways, resistant to change. They don't want anything that's new. Again, if it was an elbow, it would be in a cast sort of thing, inflexible. A muscle whose contraction bends a limb or other parts of body, that is a flexor, such as your bicep acts as a flexor. Uh, in your knee, it's going to be your quadricep and your hamstring, going into all of our anatomy and physiology lessons. Finally, able to bend easily without breaking, that is to be flexible, and that is our correct answer. Again, able to be flexed, flexible. I-B-L-E as a suffix can also be A-B-L-E, depending on your root word choice. For our third question, we're looking at medical terms. Based on an analysis of word structure, dermatology is A, an inflammation of the skin, B, the study of the skin and its functions, C, an inflammation of a cancerous cell or tumor, or D, the study of cancer and its behaviors. So for this question, we're looking for the definition of dermatology. In this case, T is a connecting between our root and our suffix. Before beginning and looking at answering this question, let's take a look at our answer options to decide if we're looking at one word part or multiple word parts. If we look, A through D are all medical terms. We have the inflammation of the skin, study of the skin, and then we have a couple cancer terms. So we're looking very much at the human body here or the body of an animal. However, it's very clear that A and B both have to do with the skin. C and D both have to do with cancer. So we know we're looking at both the root word and the suffix in our answer analysis. So with a two-part question type, we have three strategies to help us out. The first two are very much the same. First is study and memorization of our word parts. So our root and our suffix. If we understand any of those, it's gonna help us cross off some answers and have a better shot of getting this one correct. Second is plugging our word parts into words we already know. For our root word, words like dermatitis, epidermal, etc., can help us there. What do those things have to do with dermatology? And our second is looking at that word ology. Words like sociology, psychology, reflexology, and others can really help us to determine what is dermatology, looking at just simply those word parts. 
Finally, we can use process of elimination with our two distinct answer types. We have answers with the skin versus answers with cancer and cancerous cells. If we know the meaning of derma here, we're able to cross two of those off immediately, and then it's just a 50-50 shot at that point. So with all of this in mind and our strategies in mind, let's take a look at our answers. A, an inflammation of the skin, that is dermatitis. Itis is an inflammation of, so derma meaning skin, dermatitis. The study of its skin and its functions, that is dermatology. That is our correct answer. If you get that one right, pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. C, an inflammation of a cancerous cell or tumor, that's an oncological issue, but there's no real English word for it. If we're just using our word parts, the word would be oncolitis, but that's not a correct medical term. We're simply using it there to keep the same sort of format. Finally, D, the study of cancer and its behaviors, that would be oncology. So even if you look at the way that A and D are constructed versus B and C, you can see how those word parts are put together, ology and itis, with our root words, derma and on, onco, with our root words. For our last question we're gonna to do together for this lesson, we're looking at the word fracture. Based on an analysis of word structure, fracture means A, the cracking or breaking of a hard object or material, B, a smaller tiny part, amount, or proportion of something, C, to shorten a word, text, or phrase, or D, a concise statement or summary. So let's go through our first step together to decide whether we're looking at one part in this or whether we're looking at a root and a suffix or two word parts. So, A is a cracking or breaking of a hard object or material, so that's like a piece of something. B is a smaller, tiny part, like a piece of something we've already broken off, so those two have sort of a connection. C, to shorten a word, text, or phrase. I guess that could be like a piece, but it seems a little different. And finally, D, a concise statement or summary. That's not really a piece of something, that's the whole thing, we're just shortening it. So it seems like D is kind of the odd man out in this sort of scenario, but we can't really decide whether that is one or multiple word parts there. Now this is a two part question, but again, with this on just simple site analysis, it's too tough to tell in our initial summary. But in this case, we do have three strategies to help, to help us. First is to study and memorize our word parts. We know what fract means and we know what URE means. We're able to kind of separate those and answer our question. We can also plug this word into words we already know again. Fracture, that beginning part, F-R-A-C, it's like fraction, fractal, and other words. That end part, U-R-E, is similar to denture, closure, etc. By separating those, we can figure out exactly what it means. What makes a dentist different from a denture? And we can help to kind of break that word down a little bit. Finally, we can look at those first couple are more of like breaking or a piece of something. And the second two are more shortening or summarizing. So that may help us a little bit as well to determine what our answer is. So with all that in mind, let's take a look at our answer options. A, the cracking or breaking of a hard object or material, that is a fracture. If I fracture my arm, I'm breaking off a piece of it. That is the correct answer. B, a smaller, tiny part, amount, or proportion of something, that is a fraction. Two thirds is a fraction. It's a part of one whole. C, to shorten a word, text, or phrase, that's to abbreviate it. We're shortening that word down. And finally, D, a concise statement or summary, that is a brief, a term often used in government or legal matters. So, Let's review our root strategies with what we've learned today. First, a root is a simple word before affixes, before we add any prefixes or suffixes. However, there are no real root word questions on the T's exam, so we have to commit to memorizing both the root words and the affixes to answer root word type questions. Also, the biggest key is to look to our answer options. Are there similarities and differences to our answer options. Can we remove some based on those differences and similarities? Are all four using the same exact word part? Are all four using that word fract or 
oncology? If so, then we only need to focus on the unidentified word part. Again, root word and word structure questions are looking at our cumulative knowledge of what we've learned so far, all the way from the beginning with prefixes, all the way up to now. So I hope this gave you a great start to your practicing. Again, this has been Johnny from Nurse Hub, and good luck. You did it, another lesson in the books. Don't forget to take our practice quizzes and keep on working with the resources at Nurse Hub.